first pitch here is lined into the corner. Eloy Jimenez making his first plate appearance and cashing in on the first run of the afternoon for the international squad. Another off speed pitch right there from Nate Smith. Eloy Jimenez all over it. A yeah, good piece of hitting for a guy who's still in low A ball. I haven't seen too many change ups of that uh, caliber. The 20th rounder when he was at East Carolina. Dylan Cousins launches a high fly ball into the corner. And a leap. No and way. Eloy Jimenez can't. Did he make that catch? Yes, he did. I thought I saw the ball fly out. Hey, Eloy's coming. Hide your hearts. Eloy Jimenez going over the railing. Believe it. As Jimenez takes a big swing and sends one into the Western Metal Supply Company building. Wow. V, you talk about pulling your hands in right there. That's off the third deck at a Western Metal Supply Company. It's not the home run derby yet. My goodness. That is some scary pop. You know, it's a shame, young kid from the Midwest League, really having trouble yeah. with the lights here in this game. I mean, all he's done is doubled in a run homer, dove over a railing to make a catch. Yeah. I think he sold a few hot dogs in between innings. 3-2. And ground ball hit to the left side and through. One run will come in to score. Flete now rounding third. And she will come in to score as it is a two RBI single for Eloy Jimenez. In his second at bat as a White Sox, he delivers. Jimenez a double to begin the second in his first plate appearance. He would come around to score a couple of batters later. As the 1-1 one -one drifted well to right field, resting back for it is Myers. He looks up. That one is out of here. Eloy Jimenez leaves the yard for Winston-Salem. His first home run with the dash at bb and ballpark. An absolute blast from Eloy Jimenez. Jimenez a chance to break this one open. Here's the 3-1. And it's rocketed to left field. Going back for it is Carey. And that one is gone. Eloy Jimenez breaks this one wide open. A three-run shot into the foothills bullpen. His 13th of the season, and it's now 8-2 Winston-Salem. We're going to see a fastball. Let's see where he throws it. He got on foul tip, hung on to by Jill. He just went, here it is. I'm going to throw it as hard as I can. See if you can hit it. You can't, so sit down. He gone. Yes. One, two, three, couple of strikeouts. Jay has walked twice and scored twice. He gone. He gone. Strikes out the side. He now has five strikeouts in his tuning sport. Michael is uh, obviously a very extreme, a, a intriguing prospect. You see a little nasty uh, slider plus velo up in the zone. These guys are having trouble catching up with and uh, even mixing a couple of decent changeups today. Michael Kopech has his eyes on a call up at some point sooner rather than later. 16 starts in the White Sox system at double A Birmingham and ERA just over four. One of the hardest throwers in professional baseball. If he doesn't hit triple digits, I'll be very surprised because he does it fairly consistently. It's all about command for Michael Kopech. This is one of the names that I was looking forward to watching here with my own eyes. But there's no denying the velocity. Man, it got back out there to Rogers almost as quickly as it came into Naylor. He was sitting on a fastball that time. It's, this is not a guy they're like, oh, he's he's maxing out. That's why people think he has a legitimate chance to start. If he can refine the command a little bit. A bouncing ball to first for Reese Hoskins. And Kopech is there covering for round number two. Now he's out. At 101, Michael Kopech, as advertised, breezing through the World All Stars. And behind the bag, here's a changeup on 0 2. Swung on and missed. It is in the dirt. Picked up by catcher. And Kopech's 2 2 pitch. Strike three call right over the middle of the plate. One and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Now the wind in the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. See it. Again, the one and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. See it. 2-2 two -two from Kopech. Strike three and a fastball right across the middle of the play. It's a two and two. Fastball, strike three called. See it. In 0-2. Check swing high. I think he went. He did. They appeal at third base. And the pitch got him with a big hook as Alvarez swings over the top of it. 
And it's the fourth double-digit strikeout performance of the year for Kopech. As I mentioned, 10 against Jackson April 8th, 10 against Chattanooga May 31st, 12 against Chattanooga on July 26th, and now 10 against Jacksonville on August the 5th. Kopech into the lineup, 1-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. 97 miles per hour on the fastball from Kopech. He strikes out the side in order. Kind of had the position, and he's now in the big leagues. Give me an idea of, of you know, decision-making skills. The batter swings and misses and has struck out. Chris Getz, he was here 06, 07, and now part of the development team of the White Sox. As Bias swings and misses, and that is strikeout number four. Runner at first and two down now. For Dylan Moore. And Moore digs in. And takes a ball off the edge. One out. In Braves in the home blues. Blue jerseys. With Mississippi script across the front. White pants. Navy socks. Navy hats with the red bills. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one. The Barons wearing a red top with gray pants, black socks, black hat with a black bill. Birmingham, just a traditional black and red color scheme. Nothing fancy from the Barons. One, one. Foul back, and it's one and two. It's having a conversation yesterday with someone about where teams' names come from, specifically minor league baseball team names because obviously it can be uh, some we weird names if you don't understand why they are named the way they are named. One, two, swing and a miss. Got him. First pitch to Taylor Gushu. And it's a breaking ball strike in the outer half. Six nothing dash in the sixth. Third inning walk, strikeout, foul out, ground out. Fourth inning, ground out, strikeout, strikeout. Fifth inning, pop up, ground out, double strikeout. Sixth inning, strikeout, strikeout. And he's ahead 0 1 on Gushu. Next delivery. Fouled off to the screen. 0 and 2. Time for a dozen for a second consecutive start. Over just six innings in both starts. He's one strike away. Two outs, dash up 6 0 here in the sixth inning. Hansen ready to go. Has what he wants. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Fouled off to the screen behind home. Somehow Gushu made contact on one in on his hand. But that probably was a stinger to foul that pitch off. Hansen trying to fan the side in order. For a second inning. He did it in the first. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Buried the curveball. Tag applied there. Inning over. Left-handed hitting Palacios. Hard ground ball foul. First baseline. Knocked down by Tyler Payton. Palacios has grounded out to first base two times tonight. Tyler Payton makes a friend down the right field line. Throwing the baseball to a youngster who brought his glove. Here comes pitch number 67 for Cease tonight. Looks back at second. The pitch. Curveball. Strike two. A good yacker down the middle from Dillon. And he is a strike away from at least qualifying for the victory. Four and two-thirds innings for Cease. No runs on three hits. He's walked one. He's hit one and struck out five. The count 0-2 on Palacios. Here's the next from Cease. Change up near the outside corner. Swung on and missed. Six strikeout for Dylan Cease. Five shutout innings against this outstanding Lansing offense. But he seemed to be on the same page, just hitting the ball well, and then they went north and they came into a collective funk, and hitting is contagious. They can easily snap out of it. That first pitch to Reams, that one is lifted into foul territory, and 
Hits the benches off to the right. One strike on Reams. Reams an interesting story. He has spent time in every minor league team in the organization for the Tigers, except for Triple A Toledo. Had a couple games with Erie. Actually had a home run with Erie in two games. Talk about making an impact. Throw back to first. Pinero with a leadoff single. Just two hits for the Whitecaps, both singles. And talked about the hitting struggles and just not much power this year. So far, early on, weather has been cold. A couple nice days in Dayton in the high 70s, but definitely has been chilly here as the strike poured in by seas. Two quick strikes on Tim Reams. Reams looking for his first hit of the year, playing in just his second game. He struck out his first time up. Has played 41 games with Connecticut in a short A season and 41 with Lakeland. In a full season with the Whitecaps a few years ago. And that one across the plate. And standing there, Reams will take it for strike three. Seven strikeouts for Dylan Cease. The pitch to Thomas. Fastball swing and a miss. High cheese at 94. Fastball in the mid to high 90s. Still with maybe some added velocity to go on that pitch to get it into the upper 90s. 0-1. Runs inside, and there it is at 97, the hottest we've seen it today. 1-1. One one. Missed inside. The break even. That was a changeup that Thomas just waited on and flicked it foul up the third base side. 1-2. and two. He's got a changeup that he doesn't use as often as the curveball, the primary breaking pitch. Two outs and nobody on. The one two. Went back to the fastball and got Thomas swinging. Strike three. Davis's first pitch. Fastball, inner half, a called strike. Brandon doesn't like it, but that looked to be a pretty good pitch. And. Brendan right now I don't think is seeing the ball well because he was not very happy about a call in a previous at bat, and he just wandered a long way out of the batter's box, and you can see the umpire's head moving as Ricardo Estrada is probably telling him it might be in your best interest to get back in the batter's box and not show me up. I mean, you could see the umpire's head moving as he was saying something to someone, so we'll assume it was the loon second baseman. No score, top of the sixth. Jenko at first, two outs for the Loons, an 0-1 count to Brendan Davis. Cease from the stretch. Hands come together at the belt. Curve ball low, blocked by Mineo. Runner holds. So with Dayton coming to town, we told you about Sunday at 2.05. Tomorrow night, 7.05. Gates open at 5. It's Thirsty Thursday at Four Winds Field. Enjoy $2 domestic, 16-ounce draft beer, and regular 22-ounce fountain sodas all game long. Oh, yeah, there's something else happening, too. The 2016 Chicago Cubs World Series trophy will be on display. Throw to first again by Cease, close but safe. From 6 to 8, the trophy will be on display. Fans will have the opportunity to get their fo photo taken with the trophy during that time. Limited availability, got to keep that in mind. And every fan that purchases a ticket will have the chance to take a picture with the trophy, but we'll do the best we can. Davis takes a hack at a fastball. Didn't work out. One ball, two strikes. Now fans will be able to take pictures from the balcony area of the First Source Bank Performance Center, so that's also an option. All that tomorrow night. Dayton at South Bend, 7.05 first pitch. Get your tickets at southbendcubs.com. Another throw to first, close but safe. Tomorrow's game time brought to you by Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies. Make time today to explore the innovative academic programs designed to meet the special needs of adult learners at BethelCollege.edu. Runner at first base, two outs. 
Cease holds the ball a long time. His 1-2 is a fastball foul tipped at home plate. Mineo couldn't hold on, and Davis will stay at home plate. Then on Friday at Four Winds Field, 7.35, first pitch against Dayton. Reading Club Day, fantastic Friday fireworks immediately following the game. Saturday, 7.05, flat screen Saturday. Every inning, one fan in attendance will win a 50-inch flat screen TV. SouthBendCubs.com to get your tickets and join us at Four Winds Field where everyone comes to play. Fastball grounded into the camera well, third base side. And it's still one and two to Brendan Davis. The Great Lakes Loons, the Midwest League affiliate of the LA Dodgers. So the affiliates of the 2016 National League Championship Series representatives on display at Four Winds Field. Jenko, medium sized lead off first with two outs. One, two. Curveball over but low, not in a bad spot, two and two. The line scores we play in the sixth inning, Great Lakes, no runs, no hits, no errors. South Bend, no runs, three hits, no errors. This comes after a 9-6 game last night at Four Winds Field. Righty versus righty, Cease versus Davis. Breaking ball, and Davis couldn't check his swing. He strikes out. Strikeout seven for Cease, and he has six scoreless slash hitless innings here tonight. Two gone and nobody aboard. First pitch, Sermo swings from his heels and misses. It's 0-1. A solo homer doesn't help the Sox. They need two to tie. Dane Dunning has been superlative today. Here's the 0-1. And a swing and a miss again by Sermo on the fastball. He misses, and it's 0-2. Dunning looking to put this one in the books. Here's the 0-2. Outside, good take by Sermo. He lays off. Still a 1-2 count. Fastball can reach up to the mid-90s for Dunning. He has sat in the low 90s today. One, two, misses, up and away. Two balls and two strikes. Dunning with the black glove to his belt. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Ceremo swings and misses, and that is how it comes to an end for Salem. A complete game shutout at the hands of Dane Dunning, and that is all she wrote for the Sox in their hopes for the Mills Cup playoff. They are shut out a one-hit performance by Dane Dunning. Giannis, the right-hander, comes set, takes his time, winds and deals. That one's lying into the corner. This might get down. It will in left field. The tying run will come home. That's Park. And sliding in safely at third is Castillo and Rutherford with an RBI double. The left field ties the ball game. Wind blowing out hard to left. Here's a swing and another shot. That is pulled into right at a base hit. Rutherford's got an RBI single here in the first inning. Park will score from third. Three straight singles to open the game for the Charleston River Dogs. They have an early one to nothing lead here against Walker and the Braves. And Rutherford, who had a hit and a walk in five plate appearances yesterday, has got a knock and a ribby in this one. 1-0 on the way. That one smashed out, line shot, gets down. They're going to send Hoy around third to come in to score. No problem, RBI base knock for Rutherford. And after a early season struggles with men in scoring position, Rutherford's coming through last couple of days, had the big bases loaded hit yesterday, and he puts the Riverdogs on the board. UK has been teaming up with men's basketball coach John Calipari, a UK and, and the Legends teaming up. Here's the pitch. Runner goes from first, and the ball is grounded into left field. A base hit, and now Call stumbles and falls going around second. And he does manage to get back to second in time, but the base hit scores Schroeder from third.